There was a lot of fear coming back to stand up after almost two years of not doing it. You're not exactly sure what's gonna happen. When you make a special, I feel like themes kind of pop up that the comedian isn't always super aware of, but the audience can see from the third person perspective. But often the comedian is just doing what they think is funny at the time. So uh, that is, will be up to the audience to see if there was a really well thought out motif behind all this. Thank you, hello. Hi, yes. Hello, Philadelphia. Hi, my name is Joe Quazala. It's a very weird last name, Quazala. You don't really hear that one too often. You only ever really hear Quazala when like a drunk guy is making up words. <laughs> oh, okay. All right, so you're just gonna kick me out of the bar? Cause all I wanna do is take my pants off? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's me again, Joe. Hello, hi. Uh, yeah. With the weird last name, but the very normal first name. <laughs> Joe. As normal as it gets. But my actual name isn't Joe. Uh, my birth name is Joseph. But I don't go by Joseph because I'm not a pedophile. <laughs> if you if you don't know if you're kind of like I don't get it um, it's all part of my theory which is that the long male first name is sinister <laughs> yeah be careful if there's a if there's a long male first name that could be abbreviated obvious nickname and you choose not to go for it we're in trouble. Okay? I'm gonna say some elongated male first names, and what I want you guys to do, just say the first last name that comes to mind. Okay? It'll be easy. So let's start with Jeffrey. Wait, hold on, hold on. Have you guys detected that the room is split? <laughs> we got, we, we've got a heavy Dahmer contingent, but a lot of people, very enthusiastically, say an Epstein. So, I think that's a case closed on my theory. But l listen, we can, we can keep going, uh, you know, because I, I really want to prove this to you guys. How about Charles? Okay. I heard, I heard mostly Manson, obviously. No good guy. Not a fan. Um, I did hear, someone said Barkley. And if I may, too tall, too tall, rude, very rude. I think also someone said Darwin. I thought I heard a Charles Darwin. That one might not seem as obvious, but then you remember Charles Darwin's entire life's work went against the teachings of Christ. <laughs> Not in this house, Charles. <laughs> okay, how about... Donald? <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Let's all relax. I'm not here to get political with you guys. I'm not. I meant duck. 
I did. I meant, oh, I meant duck. Have you ever, ever seen that guy wearing pants? <laughs> Show me one picture. That guy's been around. Donald Duck has been around for 3,000 years, and not once has he ever covered that thing up. And that's not all, that's part of it. But the full picture really is that Donald Duck is no pants, little hat. <laughs> and that's a lethal combination. I think no pants, sure, you're a pervert. No pants, little hat. You've done crimes. <laughs> For sure. Careful. All right, let's, let's do one more. Christopher? So there were some, there were some, I'm hearing a lot, I'm hearing a lot. Some very early, very loud walk-ins. Um, I don't think I need to explain that one. Uh, just look into Christopher Walken's eyes and you can sense that he has feasted on flesh at a gymboree. <laughs> dark. Someone said Christopher Robin. <laughs> kind of late. Well, maybe only one person said it. And I will say, little boy who goes to the woods and his only friends are stuffed animals? That is a future serial killer. That is what that is. That's evidence. <laughs> who, what else do we have for, for Christopher? Columbus. Columbus is a, is a big one um, because it's controversial, right? A lot of us were taught as kids that he was a hero, that he discovered America. Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue. But now, you know, we know with some historical reexamination, Christopher Columbus was kind of a heinous guy. He did some really terrible things. This is true. Christopher Columbus directed his men to chop off the hands of natives who wouldn't give them gold. Evil, despicable. Now, Chris Columbus <laughs> directed Home Alone. <laughs> so I think that's actually a case closed <laughs> on that theory. Yes, it does deserve applause. Um, Home Alone, by the way, my nightmare scenario as a kid. That was not a fun romp for me. Because I was a scared kid. I was scared of, of I, I don't understand when people are like, oh my God, can you imagine what it would be like to be a kid again? The worry-free life of a child. Not a care in the world. That was not my experience. <laughs> I was afraid of everything as a kid because I didn't know what was possible. When you don't know the limits of the physical realm, everything stresses you out. Like sure, when I was five, I didn't worry about paying the rent, but I did worry about accidentally pressing a button on the remote control that would trap me inside the TV. <laughs> And that's way scarier. When you know that's where the Crypt Keeper lives? Everything I was afraid of as a kid was on TV. Crypt Keeper, Shredder, Jay Leno. I was scared of everything as a, as a kid. And then even when I was going through puberty, I was scared of, because, uh, all right, here's the thing. I am of the age where our, when I went through puberty, it was a very specific time of the internet. We had it, but it was like pre-Google. And usually, yeah. if you wanted to find something online, you would have to type www <laughs> dot whatever <laughs> dot com. And then just let her rip. <laughs> Hope it works. And as like a curious pubescent boy, that was too much. I wasn't ready for that amount of power. And I was scared to go to 
www.sex.com. <laughs> Not ready for that. Could be anything. I don't even know what sex is at the time. Also, I'm like a huge wimp, so I'm like, what if they're not married? <laughs> so that was a whole thing. But I, again, I, I was curious though. I like wanted to see some stuff, but I didn't want it to be more than I could handle. Uh, so my task, I guess, was to come up with a URL that was tantalizing, but not too intense. And what I came up with, and this is true, www.oolala.com <laughs> oolala.com And you know what's really crazy? Is it worked? <laughs> it took me to a website and it was like exactly what I wanted. No, like, real nudity, but, like, some ladies smiling, <laughs> you know? Kind of low-res pictures, kind of looked like they were from an exotic CD-ROM, <laughs> you know? They looked like Jasmine from Aladdin, but, like, not from the movie from, like, the discount Party City Halloween costume. <laughs> Jasmine. So not so much Jasmine as Magic Carpet Woman. <laughs> Just a lot of Magic Carpet Women on oolala.com. And I loved it. I would sit there looking at oolala.com, big smile on my face. In the computer room, a sacred place in the late 90s. But if I heard any noise anywhere in the house, I would immediately shut the entire computer down. <laughs> Just in case. You gotta be safe. But I realize now that's probably a more disturbing thing for my mom to walk in on. You know, her 11-year-old son is sitting there in front of a turned-off computer. Like, hey, Joe, is everything okay in here? Oh, needed you worry, mother. I'm simply... Practicing computer. <laughs> I think that would really worry my mom. <laughs> Why can't he be like the normal kids and use the computer to go on bigfunkytitties.com? <laughs> Listen, I don't know if this will surprise you guys. But I am not into sports. I don't know if you picked up that vibe from me. Number one oolala.com fan, not into sports? Okay. Yeah. Was never into sports. I, I regret that though. I don't wear that as like a badge of pride. I feel like I missed out. Sports are like such a big part of our culture and I don't know anything. And so I tried to like look stuff up, like to learn. Like I tried to Google the 100 greatest athletes of all time. And I found a bunch of lists that, you know, different sites had, and there were a lot of the same names on every list. Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali. But you know who else was on every list of the greatest athletes of all time? Secretariat. <laughs> the horse. Secretariat, the big dumb fucking horse. <laughs> is on every list of the greatest athletes of all time. And I don't know about you guys, I just kind of assumed if you're making a list of the greatest athletes, no animals. Because <laughs> if you, I, I feel like it's unfair. If you let one animal on there, you gotta, you know, yeah, you gotta change that list now. 
So now I feel like that list has to be like number 25 greatest athlete of all time, Michael Phelps. We've maybe never seen anyone that fast at swimming, except number 24, any dolphin. <laughs> Doesn't matter which one. Pick a random dolphin. 24th greatest athlete of all time. Easy. Easy. And so, like, if we're going to break the rules, who are our actual greatest athletes of all time? I feel like it's got to be Silverback Gorilla, <laughs> Cheetah, a boat. <laughs> Why not? If we're going to break the rules, yeah. Boat is the greatest athlete of all time. I feel like if Goat can stand for greatest of all time, why can't Boat stand for Boats? Oh, athletes? Uh huh? Yep. Yeah, I just don't, like, I, I don't know much about sports, but I do know our culture's obsessed with it. You know, we really care about, like, who the best basketball player is and who's the best football player and you know who's the fastest person. But I've noticed we do not care about who the strongest person is. And I know this because there's a competition to find the strongest man in the world. It's called the strongman competition and nobody watches that on purpose. <laughs> you don't. You're always just like flipping around like, oh, what are these freaks up to? <laughs> I guess I'll watch this. Like the World Series is primetime network television. The Strongman competition is on a random Tuesday at 3 a.m. <laughs> on like ESPN Kids. <laughs> it's, it's sad. And like you can tell we don't respect them because sure, they have to lift weights, but we also make them do tasks <laughs> that sound like they were concocted by a flamboyant king. <laughs> he was like, oh, I have grown weary from the feast, and yet I still wish for enthusement. <laughs> Whatever shall I do? Oh, buff boys. <laughs> buff boys of the village gather around. <laughs> I have some activities. <laughs> buff boys, look. There are very many heavy stones. <laughs> On the ground, where it's boring. <laughs> I don't know, buff boys. What do we do with the stones, buff boys? I suppose you could lift the stones and stack them high upon the platforms, my oh my. <laughs> yes! Lift the stones, heavenwards, of course, upon the pedestal. Hooray! Buff boys, enough with the stones. The dessert hour is upon us. And I want chocolate and whipped cream. But buff boys, how will I get to market? I have no means to get to the market. I suppose I could take my extremely heavy truck. But buff boys, how will it move? <laughs> I suppose I did tie a rope around it. <laughs> you could tie the rope around your waist and pull the truck for me post haste. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, pull the truck with all your might, buff boys. Chocolate awaits. <laughs> 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 and then someone wins. 
someone does all that and they're crowned the strongest man in the world. And nobody gives a shit. Nobody cares, nobody knows who that is. If you win the NBA Finals, you're a celebrity. If you win the strongman competition, and this is true, you're euthanized. <laughs> Don't get mad at me, Dems to rules. There was a time period where we basically pressed pause on life for like a year and a half and it was, it was awful. And it's so nice to have moments like this where we can all be together. And as I've been reflecting on the lockdown and how we pressed pause on life for a year and a half, I kind of think we pressed pause on life for the past 20 years. Because my parents turned 70 recently, but no, they fucking didn't. No, they didn't. I see them, they're sharp, they're active, they do yoga. They have a brunch spot they like because there's Beyond Sausage there. They're not 70. They're 50, it's 20 years ago. 70 year olds don't eat Beyond Sausage. 70 year olds eat whatever's in the IV drip. You know? That's what 70 is. I don't want to shock you guys, but Samuel L. Jackson is in his 70s. Isn't that crazy? Cause no, he's not. Right? He's in his 50s, Max. It's 20 years ago. I know he's not in his 70s, cause he's in the Marvel movies wearing an eye patch. And when I see it, I'm like, oh, cool. And not, oh, God, did it fall out? <laughs> no, he's in his 50s. It's 20 years ago. If there's a movie starring a guy in his 70s, it's not an action movie. Okay, it's a very sad movie scored by like violin where like a confused, hunched over man is just walking around, shuffling his feet, going, ah, ah, I don't know what shoes are. Help me. Or in other words, Clint Eastwood. Now, there's a guy who's in his 70s because he's in his 90s. You see what I'm saying? It's just 20 years ago. And I'm not 35, I'm 15. Absolutely. I know I'm 15 because all my friends have serious opinions about Batman. And the very idea of me owning a home is hysterical. That little guy, he's not allowed. Get out of here. I guess what I'm trying to say is we all died in 9-11. And this is all just a collective dream we're having. Can't quite move on. Just repeating the same stuff over and over again. I think about how it's 20 years ago and like there's no upward job mobility anymore. Like nobody retires. Like, I know I said I, I don't know anything about sports, but I do know that every sports announcer is 100 years old. <laughs> like, the oldest people imaginable. And I think about that in terms of, like, the young guys. You know, the ones who have, like, rich broadcasting voices, but they don't get a shot because there's no turnover. And so they're wasting their talents, and it could be wasted no other place in 2022 than podcasts. <laughs> And that really bums me out. That someone who should be like calling baseball games instead is like, oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Becker cast, the only podcast that episode by episode reviews the long forgotten Ted Danson sitcom, Becker. Shout out to all my hashtag Becker Peckers out there. Today's episode is brought to you by BigBadBoxerShorts.com. Are you tired of undergarments that fit you? Well, 
BigBadBoxerShorts.com has got you covered, literally, with less than two styles of underwear that are large and not good. Get $5 added to your purchase at checkout by using the coupon code STEPONMEBECKER. It's big Becker fan. I would watch that podcast. Give it to me now. Yeah. I've talked a lot about how I don't know much about sports. I think we can attribute that to my frame. Um, obviously, I am not a tall gentleman. I am 5'7", and here's the deal with being 5'7". I think this is true for everybody who's 5'7 across the board. You talk to somebody who's 5'7", and they will tell you this little secret that's true for all of us guys who are 5'7", which is that we are 5'6". <laughs> yeah, we are going to lie to you. Every single time. Feels great. Love doing it. And it's just, it doesn't feel that bad. Not that big of a lie. It's just an inch. But for some reason, in my head, 5'7 sounds so much taller than 5'6. So I don't, I don't think it's that egregious. But there is something kind of interesting about being 5'6, which is that I'm 5'5. Five five. <laughs> Did you really think I was only gonna lie by one inch? <laughs> Get out of here! Everybody gets two! Everybody gets two inches. Not gonna admit to being 5'5 five five out of the gate. Are you kidding me? 5'5 five five is not the height of a man. 5'5 five five is more so like the height of a normal sized dog. Measured while it's lying down. And it was about five five. Of course, the name of that joke is "Don't let the audience find out you're five four. <laughs> Do not love being my size. It can be hard. Like when I go shopping for clothes. I want it to be a normal experience, but I always inevitably wind up in the section of the store that's called like, so your tween's got a tood. <laughs> Try to buy a pair of jeans that comes with a free go-gurt. Perfect. Perfect. I can't tell you how crushing it is to your spirit to put on a shirt to try it on and it fits perfectly. Yeah. And then you see on the front, it says, shut up, dad. <laughs> or like on the back, it says, if you can read this, the Minions backpack fell off. <laughs> And I, I, you know, I consider myself lucky that, you know, I'm not a single man anymore because dating as a short guy is tough. Being on those dating apps, they want you to say your height. They really do. <laughs> but there is no way <laughs> as a man to say you're short and make it sound like sexy. <laughs> you cannot. It comes across as weird. If you're like, hey, what's up? I'm Joe. I'm 35. I don't smoke. I drink occasionally. And yeah, I'm itty bitty. <laughs> Just a little guy. I don't know. Maybe we could go on a date. And if you play your cards right, maybe at the end of the night, I'll let you pick me up. <laughs> I'm 
You can hold me. You can cradle me. You can choose not to vaccinate me. Yeah. And you know, we live in an age of body positivity, and I genuinely think that's a beautiful thing. But we do not extend that to short men. We really don't. And you know what? I think that's fine. I do not think we need to do that. Because it would be annoying if you knew when I posted like a full body mirror Instagram selfie that there would be hundreds of comments and all of them would say like, yes, little prince. (laughs) Go ahead, go off, little prince. You don't need no stool. Hashtag no stool for the little prince. Hashtag oolala.com. We don't want that. And believe me, we don't have that. We do not have that now. I have plenty of people online who have opinions about what they call my weird body. So that's exciting. There's one in particular. I have a clip of my stand-up on YouTube. And the top comment on that video with more than 2,900 likes on that comment alone, which means it's resonating with people. The comment is, he has a adult body and child legs. I'll be honest. I do not love how long some of you are laughing. Starting to get hurtful. But you know, I let that comment eat away at me. You know, because I, I, I wanted to know who wrote it. Because it's, it's YouTube, it's the internet, it's anonymous. But then I realized, I think I know who left it. Because it's written in a very specific way. He has a adult body and child legs. And guys, because I can hear it in his voice so clearly, I think it can be none other than Forrest Gump. And just, it's so clear, the voice in my head. He has an adult body. (laughs) And child legs. God put him together different. But he had no choice. Cause all the adult legs were taken. All right, that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much. I'm Joe Quazala. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah, so this is my second special. I know, I'm, I'm hoping it'll be something fun, silly, personal, and at the very end of the day, funny. When I think about my process of writing jokes, um, I'm never able to really put my finger on what it is I'm doing. You know, sometimes you go up there with an idea and you strike gold on stage. Sometimes I write it in my notes app, word for word what I'm gonna say, and that's pretty much how it remains. You know, a great comedy room, I feel like, is a combination of physical and more maybe spiritual attributes. Like physical, 
low ceilings, not too deep, you know, that, that kind of stuff. Uh, but then there's also like, the right people need to run the room. That they need to both book good acts, but also know how to manage if the audience is getting out of hand, how to take care of that quickly without interrupting the proceedings too much, how to make the comedians feel welcome. All those sorts of things, I think, come, if, when they come together, it's, it's a really special thing. Well, this will be my first time performing at Helium. All I can say is that the reputation precedes itself, you know, and uh, the bar is, has been set high. So if I don't have a good time, I'm telling everybody. Well, you know, I, I grew up in Pittsburgh, and you know, when I wanted to do another special, I, th I said I would love to do it back at home, back where I started, back where my family is, and they said, what about Philly? Wasn't that fantastic, folks? If you want to see more of that great content, stay tuned to Helium Comedy Studios' YouTube channel. <laughs> I gotta go take a shower.